I, I have to confess actually, I originally, I don't know if you remember, I sent you a message saying what time zone are you in? Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I just, mm. since, I was just like, what, how did I not realise with a name like Stanley that he's English? <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know how I managed that. Because on your, um, all I had to go on was your Stan SB um, profile page picture. And I don't know what it is, but I just assumed straight away that you were Scandinavian. I, I think that's a compliment. We're going we're gonna to pretend that. Well, like, yeah. Scandinavians are an attractive race, so. I'm <laughs> up now! Hello and welcome to Producer Spotlight number 8. Today I am joined by the splendiferous Mr. Stan SB. <laughs> and uh, I know no introduction is really necessary, but we'll do one anyway. Um, Stan is taking the EDM world by storm. And in his words, I'm going to make sure I don't mess this up now. He makes hyper melodic pop dance D&B dubstep breaky stuff. <laughs> um, and he has recently released his Anybody Out There EP, which will rock your socks off. So if you haven't already listened to it, go check it out and I'll put a link in the description for you. So yeah, welcome Stan. Hello. <laughs> um, now for those of you who are new to my producer spotlights, I'll just reiterate that the questions I ask are partially focused on the music, but they're also quite a lot focused on the person behind the music because that's a bit more interesting, really, isn't it? So, yeah, let's get started with the basics. Um, what uh, door do you use? I use Logic for pretty much everything except my live, my live shows. Um, I, I run um, pretty much solely off Massive a lot of the time, uh, though I have been experimenting with FM8 and Silent quite a lot recently. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and so why, why would you recommend Logic over others? Um... I, mean, I don't think it's a case of that so much as I started on GarageBand like however many years ago, and Logic has basically just grown up GarageBand, and I, I re like I really like the way it's laid out because you don't have to worry about rooting too much; you just create a track and it creates its own slot for your own instrument or whatever, and then you can put that off to other buses or anything else. It's lot, but it just works with my workflow the most. Um, that enables them both work well together. Yeah. I was going to say, did you go straight from GarageBand to Logic, or did you play around with some of the other doors as well? I did play around with Reason for a while, and Ableton also. Um, Ableton kind of stuck with me because of the really easy MIDI mapping that they have. Um, but yeah, for production, it's generally Logic at the moment. Though, I am slightly tempted to try and make a track on my Ableton solely, because okay. I haven't had that before. <laughs> Yeah, I've uh, I've just made the switch to Ableton from Reason, so I'm uh, still getting to grips with it myself. Um, but it is it's a very cool piece of kit, definitely. I can yeah, see there why. are some um, there are some really awesome plugin no no uh, effects plugins in Ableton that I don't know of anywhere else. There's um what's it? There's one called Erosion that's incredible for basses. It gives it a really nice gritty no not gritty sort of analog kind of tone because it just puts white noise in there and distorts it away with it, it's weird. <laughs> I'll have to check that out, that sounds good. Um, so how did uh, Stan SB begin? That's a good question. Um, well, the production side of it I guess started with GarageBand. Um, before that I actually I had a babysitter who, um, who I went to and her, and her son did a lot of music making on EJ. And like, I, oh, I remember I, EJ. Yeah. Yeah. Was, um, I, I still got a load of his MP3 somewhere. But uh, yeah, the, that kind of got me, got my ears pricked up. And then Garage Band and Music 2000 back in the day. Yeah. Uh, I've kind of, I've been doing a little bit of production for uh, about ten years, like properly, like. I've had my finger on it for a bit, um, and then like about five years ago, it became proper. Um, but the, the point that Stan SB probably started was back on Newgrounds. Um, I used to make a lot of music on there, and it, it was a great way for me to get, get peer review and always be pushing to get higher up the always changing charts on there. And, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of got. It might have instilled a little bit too much uh, competitiveness in me, but I, I don't mind that 
that right. much. You know? But yeah, the the vocal thing start as probably stems from the fact that I used to play a lot of punk bands and things like okay. that uh, way back when. <laughs> Yeah, I think mo most people I know went through the whole punk and then metal stage before eventually landing on kind of electronic music, dubstep, drum and bass, that kind of thing. I actually bypassed the metal thing. Um, I've never been a huge fan of most metal. Like, you know, there's the exceptions, but yeah. Fair enough. I've actually always been a fan of the Prodigy and stuff. And from being a break dancer when I was a lot younger. Oh, um, wow, okay. I, I, did, <laughs> yeah, I, I just didn't know that. that uh, like the age of seven till maybe 14 uh yeah uh, i always kind of had that kind of breaky awareness because of it okay like a, um break dancing music is very classic break sort of hip-hop sort of stuff yeah you should uh, <laughs> you should you should bring that into your live shows you know bring a bit of break dancing while mixing in and yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, live shows are properly together. Like, I don't know. We 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 don't want to make it just us us three standing there playing music to people because I think people are used to that. And uh, I don't know. Since since uh, I'm bringing in my vocals and having a different sort of sound to most of the other people in the drum and bass scene, I think it would be a bit a bit uh, of a short sight not to try and push the envelope on the live thing as well. Yeah, definitely. But, so when when did you start putting your vocals in your music? Uh, I can give you a date, I think. Oh um, wow, okay. <laughs> let's see, I've got my iTunes. Um, I did a really old rush of Tears and Rain, and that was the first track I did my vocals on. Um, <laughs> in my iTunes, where are we? There we go. 2009. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, uh, June. 2009 <laughs> um, yeah that, that was about it that was when it, well, I kind of thought why don't I just do both of these punky and uh, drum and bass things together I mean because I've been performing for so long so when you started doing that had you already found your sound in you know the unique vocals that you do now or did you find that later um, I don't think I used a vocoder on Tears and Rain, if I remember correctly. Um, it was all harmony based, but I've always loved that sound of like, um, even like old country songs with the huge choral vocal sort of thing. Yeah. I love the sound, so that's why you hear it quite make, like uh, quite forefront in my music, because it just makes a track so much bigger and more effective, if you know Definitely. what I mean. Definitely, yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean to say I won't do some more minimal stuff because I know it's almost become a staple, and I don't want to make rules for myself. That that's like one of my, my biggest rule is not to have rules. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great rule to have, to be fair. So what what do you feel when uh, people obviously compare your vocoder sound to that of say Owl City? What what how do you feel when people do that? I don't know. Um, the Owl City thing's interesting. I really like I quite like Al City for quite a lot of the things he does um, I never actually intend to sound that much like him um, melodically I think he is incredible and there's nothing wrong with people comparing me to him in that respect I don't think that vocally I'm as uh, that similar to him but it's all you know just a matter of opinion I guess I mean the part of it's probably that there aren't that many people out there who use the vocoders as successfully as you two so it's natural that you would mm. be compared as most people wouldn't know anyone else yeah it was kind of funny i was at um, a friend's house um back uh, about three months ago and um he had he had he had this sort of look on his face it looked like he'd had an epiphany and he sort of said you just sound like if if noisier ate owl city <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. That, that's a that's a pretty huge compliment to have. I, yeah, I was I was just <laughs> beyond happy with that. Yeah, I mean, any any sentence involving you sounding like noisier, that's got to be. Yeah, well, they they are my probably my biggest production idols. Like, um, yeah. That saves if, me going on a rant later about how amazing they are and asking you who who you would like to collab with if if you could collab with anyone then. Yeah, I mean. I'm 
this year I'm going to just like try to push really hard to try and get somewhere with them because I mean like we are both very polar like polar opposites in terms of like they are massively heavy and filthy and like not so much on the melodic side and I am on the melodic side and I, you know still try and keep that intensity but what I would give to just shadow them in the studio for a week or yeah two. <laughs> yeah see the masters at work definitely yeah so how how did it feel to get featured on Liquicity with Cloudhead when you were just 16? That was mental. Um, I didn't even send it off to him. That's, that, oh, wow. It's total luck. Um, like, Cloudhead was on Newgrounds, like, um, probably for about a month before Liquicity came along. And he'd seen it in a free-running video, which, oh, got, okay. which I was really excited about because it got 15,000 views. And I was like, Jesus, that's way more than I'm ever used to. And then um, I got on my MySpace from Maris and Liquicity, and then it all happened. <laughs> um, it was funny actually because I, at the time, I thought it would be a one-off because I sent him the next track after that, which is one that most people won't have heard of, which was called Wood Boy. <laughs> yeah, I um, haven't heard of that one. Oh, yeah, it's um, it's quite old. It was on my MySpace, and I sent that to him, and he was like this probably isn't good enough and I was like fair enough maybe I just got it right once and then I made Smudge and Tears and Rain and Forget You and everything and it just I mean you're, of... you're, you're pretty much a regular on there these days yeah um, definitely very happy with that which I mean that's um, that says a lot because he he's very very picky when it comes to definitely. uploading stuff so yeah I've got I've got a, a few friends who've sent off to him a few times and he, they you know he's He's become more picky over the years, I think. I don't think I'd make it on there now. Like, I don't think he'd... If he heard Cloudhead today, I don't think I'd make it on. But I think it's all, like, right place, right time. It's just, just like every other story in the industry. You Definitely, know? yeah. Um, I, uh, I have <laughs> a couple of questions from Facebook now. Um, <laughs> I was going to try and do this with a straight face. Hang on. Okay, um, the first of which is from Elliot Berger, who I think you met in Belgium not I too long did. ago. I did, we have the same manager now. Oh, right, okay. But yeah, yeah he's a great guy, great guy, Elliot Berger, and uh, he asks, why are you so good when you don't even lift? <laughs> oh, God. Um, well, it's no secret that I don't lift. Uh, but I don't know... If, if we're talking about music, I think it's just because I've been doing it for so long. I'm very comfortable with working with sound and stuff. And recently, because of the amount of familiarity I have with my tools, I've actually made quite a few strides on sound design. And I just got my monitors about two months ago, and they've changed everything for me. Um, I've remade some of my old classic kind of stuff. Um, like, I finished the remake of Give Them Hell the other day okay. and I can safely say that I think it's the proudest I've been of a mix and general sound of a track since the beginning. Wow, um, okay. It's a big claim. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've, I've made a lot of leaps and strides and I made a lot of leaps and strides in, two, in 2012 in my sound, I think. Um, mm. And a technical ability. And I think it's all because I'm self-taught. And, <laughs> and um, it's just meant that I've been able to take my time and learn everything as it suits me instead of being told by a teacher how a compressor is meant to be, meant to be used or anything like that. And I think when you're, when you're teaching yourself as well, you make the connections that work for you with how everything fits together and how it all works rather than being told given a formula that might not necessarily work for you. Exactly. I mean, when I compress things, I compress beyond what people... Like, I get told off by a lot of my producer friends. Like, uh, <laughs> get the knee and the knee will just be flat and the... Um, the no, no, yeah, the ratio will just be flat and the knee will be like that and I'll just push <laughs> something on. So basically just a massive square and then everything ends up just sounding really intense because, like... Like, if you listen to um, a lot of my stems, uh, like, especially the pad on Stratosphere, even though it's quite, 
uh, quite a mellow kind of sound because it's so squashed. It sounds like it's being hit really hard. <laughs> it becomes a bit more intense. Yeah. Still, that's that's your preference. That's your sound. Totally. Yeah. I. I <laughs> I don't. I swear that I don't compress something. <laughs> it's awful. I know. You sh I, I I might have to take this clip and send it to mate. Do you even compress? And, uh... <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that a second ago. <laughs> um, the second question is from Vila, who ooh. asks, "When did you say who?" Oh, no, ooh, oh no, that would have been that would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, the second question is from Vila, who asks. When are you going to work with her angry face? Oh, this, this again. Um, <laughs> God, uh, this again. She just won't give up, will she? It's, it's no secret that me and Vila have talked a few times and that we would like to work together. And it's completely my fault that we haven't. I, I take full responsibility. <laughs> I am completely sporadic in the way I work in that I have probably about 14 different works in progress I could play you right now uh, of different varying levels, probably more than 14 actually if I think about it, but yeah uh, of varying levels of uh, completion and uh, yeah and one of those is something that I'd really like Vila to work with me on like vocally okay. and it's just one that I'm not that inspired on at the moment that's not to say it's not good it's just the way I'm pushing, well, no, just the way it's ended up sounding has kind of turned me off it. And I'm really temperamental when I work, actually. This, this is one thing I change about my own work. It's the it's... sign of a genius, I think. <laughs> Thank you. But, um, like, most people I know work on the drop first. Like, they work on the most exciting part of the song first, and then they kind of bring down from there for the rest of it, and whatever. I do something stupid in that I make the intro first, I make the music for the intro and like the build up and everything and then I have to follow through on the promises <laughs> make. make the intro as crazy as I can and it's like yeah what's it um, I don't know, I make, I, make I, make, I make promises in the intro a lot of the time that I can't follow through on and then when I can't I'm just like oh, fuck that Next track. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I can definitely relate to that. I'm. You're. You're not alone. Don't worry. Oh. Um, <laughs> our uh, our mutual friend, Mr. Adrian Camacho. Am I? Do you know how to pronounce this surname? Am I saying that right? Camacho. I've never asked him. <laughs> right. We'll we'll go with Camacho. And uh, he he told me I should ask you about a sea creature video. <laughs> okay. Um, it's. <laughs> It's, weird. Uh, it's a video that quite a few people will have, will have seen. It's I think it's in Japan or China, and it's this weird, like... Um, it, lo it just kind of looks like a ball of skin with, right. with like, um, frills around the bottom, and they, they run off, and they pour coke on it, and it explodes. Right, um, okay. I'll link it to you in a second, but um, I made Adrian watch it, and um, it, I wish I'd recorded it, because Adrian's reaction was incredible. Was it, it just his face was just... I couldn't see him, but I could just hear him freaking out. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Do you have a favourite track that you've done? Or... Too hard to choose? I've, I've got a couple. Um, the ones that I'm most proud of are probably... Uh, uh, Flatfoot Face is one of them, actually. That's uh, uh, probably my favourite off the EP. Um, that's encouraging because, like, if, if people like, I think that seems to be the one that people seem to have enjoyed the most off the EP, which is incredible because that's my favourite off the EP. And if I agree with my fans, then everything's just, yeah. you know, going to go well. Uh, another one is Simple Life, which I know I haven't released yet. I'm re, I'm re uh, mastering it and mixing it a little because it, it's not to the standard that I am now, and I wouldn't want to do it. Um, I wouldn't want to do it uh, an injustice. Um, I don't think there are many more that really stand out for me. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, there are no tracks of mine that I hate at all. Like I make the music I want to hear. So if it's if I'm not enjoying it by the end of finishing it, it's like nah, I'm not happy with that. Even if yeah. 
maybe somewhere someone would really enjoy that or it might even become their favourite track. I'll just check if there are, if there are any I'm forgetting, because there will be. <laughs> um, I was quite proud of We're Alive, but... Yeah. Not, yeah. Because uh, I, I think one of, one of the things you've done really well is you've shown your kind of versatility in all the different genres over time. So, actually, mm. I, was, I was going to ask, because... You've done you've done producing in quite a few genres, but I think it's fair to say you're predominantly focused on drum and bass. So, yeah. what what uh what was the first drum and bass track you heard? Can you remember? Like what got you into yes, drum and bass? Yes, I can. It was well, I don't know whether it's the first drum and bass track I heard, um, but it was definitely the first drum and bass track that I thought, oh, I really like this. Um, yeah, uh, it was um, "Lights Go Down" by High Contrast. Ah, okay. Which um, I heard on the radio and I was like, I wrote it down. Um, <laughs> I wrote it down on my phone and I was like, yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I th think that was the first one. Yeah, I really enjoyed that track. I, unfortunately, now by nowadays standards, the production on a lot of tracks from that era, just they, they don't cut it on dance floor as much because people are used to such a heavy a sound. Yeah. But as a track, I still really enjoy it. It it is quite funny when you when you go back through say back to the two thousand and nine stuff that was getting released. I mean, there's some stuff that obviously still holds holds its own really really well, but there's other stuff that you listen to. You're like, wow, okay, we've come a long way. Since. Yeah, definitely. Um, what about vocalist wise? If you could collaborate with any vocalist. Ooh, um, I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Um, there. Are, Aside from, you know, a couple of obviously quite um, prominent vocalists in, like, you know, big music, I find a lot of vocalists nowadays are kind of overshadowed by what a vocalist is meant to sound like. There's okay. so much over-singing nowadays, like, too many vocal runs, and, and I don't know. Um, Azealia Banks would be fun to work with. I wouldn't <laughs> mind working with some rappers at some point, um, but I actually have a plan for that, which... Okay. Which, uh, yeah, I may as well tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm planning if, if it goes through. I'm going to be doing um, a track, um, probably a glitch hop track, and um, what I'll do is I'll write it all and I'll do just a chorus, maybe one verse, and leave maybe three or four verses completely blank, and allow um, a load of um, rappers to all have their go at it. Okay, that's cool. For the track. Which is almost like a uh, a rap battle. <laughs> that'd be awesome, definitely. Yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, but people I'd want to work with. Alive or dead, but alive obviously dead. with with the dead ones, they would be back alive, not yeah. still there <laughs> when you work with them. I wouldn't mind working with Adam Jurich from Cat and Crows, but he's alive as far as I know. <laughs> um. Well, I think working with Al City would be quite fun because I really enjoy his melodic style, and I think that we'd play off each other quite well in terms of. Do you know what? That would be a brilliant mind fuck for people. Just don't tell them it's Al City and release it, and just see if people pick up on it. <laughs> yeah. What is the coolest thing a fan has done for you? There have been some really cool ones. Uh, I've had a guy paint a banner for me before that I wow okay before. um there, there was a guy who donated 200 pounds for the uh pledge I did a while ago which was beyond anything uh, thanks again to anyone who did pledge anything that if that was a mental mental week um <laughs> uh the, there's a guy who emailed me the other day who said he's painted a skateboard for me and right uh that could be really cool if you know if I could get on. <laughs> so he's trying. I think he's gonna send it to me. I need to get in contact. Um, yeah, there's loads of things like even just down to the people who are there at the front of every show, singing along to every song, even the ones that are only previewed, just going for it and representing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the Stan SB Army. Yeah, even down to that, it's it, it's completely humbling and more than I could ever expect or ask for but it happens so you know it is it's it's still overwhelming 
it's it's really cool. <laughs> if if one day they decided to make Stan S B the movie, who would you want to play you in it? Shit, I've never had to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good thing. If you if you had, you'd probably be a severe narcissist. Yeah. That's an impossible question to answer. <laughs> well, we, um, we've had some very interesting answers. We've had uh, Christopher Walken was Vila's choice. Um, I believe Josh's was Morgan Freeman, possibly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, be... Maybe Steve Buscemi. Uh, okay. Uh, who would I want to actually play me? Uh, I'd probably want. Uh, um, shit, I forgot his name. Uh, I think it's <laughs> Paul. He's in Breaking Bad. Uh, okay, yeah. I like him. I think that's mainly why I'd want him to play. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of actors that would look good blonde as well. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Um, if it was an action film, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so how how true to the actual plot would that be? Have you been blowing up nuclear bunkers and? Well, I I, I I do like running around screaming a lot, but I wouldn't say it's action packed. <laughs> Ill advised. <laughs> Yeah, like and if anyone's ever like known me, they'll they'll know that you have to if you. There's a story that Bust, uh, Buster, um, B R S B R no B U R S T R E, the producer, yeah. that he told me about me that probably it would sum it up. And that was him and another friend of ours, Brooke, were in a cave and we were in Whitby, which is a seaside town in England. For anyone that doesn't know, um, we were in a cave and I disappeared quickly and they lost me for ten minutes. And um, they came around the corner to find me halfway up a cliff, um, sitting on a rock, screaming, "This is my sea throne." That that pretty much sums up what it, I, I'm what I'm like when I've been released on the public. I'm a little bit like a puppy, I'm told. Yeah, no, and and that was with no alcohol either. That was that was just pure pure Stan. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty clean to be honest. Um, like I don't drink much. I don't really ever do drugs ever <laughs> you know i mean everyone's done what they've done but i i i'm pretty clean cut <laughs> i just eat a shitload of junk food <laughs> <laughs> you get get the e numbers that will get you through yeah. <laughs> um now if you had to be stuck in an elevator for 12 hours with someone who would you want it to be it depends what sort of dynamic we're gonna have in there <laughs> uh, 24 hours in an elevator could be quite a steamy situation <laughs> <laughs> see I was surprised none of the other people I've asked had picked up on this that they could get 12 hours with any woman of their choice I mean El Elliot Berger did choose his mum but that's not the kind of woman that I, I had in uh, mind um alright It's, it's coming down to that whole thing of I don't actually know what I like nowadays. <laughs> like, it's the same with music, you know, I don't listen to that much music. Um, that's because I identify with a huge amount of it as well, um, I didn't mention earlier. But it's the same with people and celebrities. I, I don't know. Um, I guess it would be interesting if you were stuck in an elevator with maybe Morgan Freeman. He could just... Um, narrate the whole thing yeah he could yeah. give you a running commentary and it would be fascinating for all 12 hours um Brian Blessed he'd, he'd make it Ooh. pretty yeah. he'd be pretty loud in an elevator that is an enclosed space yeah no Brian Blessed in an enclosed space <laughs> uh, uh maybe Faint. Me, me and Faint would get through it pretty good. Uh, on the women front, maybe like uh, Emma Stone or you know any of the obvious ones. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe noisier. Then I could talk to them finally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, no, that that was something that Rogue picked up on that I'd never even thought of when I asked the question was that he'd want to be stuck in there with like some really talented producer to just pick their brain for twelve hours. But yeah. that's Rogue. He's he's very on it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, good one. Um, yeah, no, th there's no clear one for me on that. I'm just, sorry. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, would you rather be able to turn invisible or fly? Fly. Easy. Okay. Just because that would be a rush. and I've, you know, I, I, I go rock climbing and skateboarding and things like that and I enjoy adrenaline -y things. You'd yeah. be able to get to all new places then? Yeah, yeah. Like, go fight a clown. And also, yeah. if, if a trick started to go wrong, if you're like about to face plant, just, oh, flying, no face plant. Thing. It'd make rock climbing boring. <laughs> You'd be like, look, guys, no ropes. Oh, look, no hands either. I'm just. <laughs> um, now, if there was a fire in your house and you had to save three things, what would they be? Definitely my MacBook because everything's on there. And then it gets interesting. Uh, I do worry for the I producer that I interview that doesn't say their laptop. Just trying to think. Um, I don't know. Can I duplicate my laptop twice? <laughs> I'd probably take my speakers with me if I tried. Like if I take my laptop too. Um, everything else is downstairs by the door, so I'll be all right. Uh, oh, okay. That smart, smart home packing right there. Unless, unless, you know, front door smash, hands in. Uh, <laughs> all it. Because <laughs> I've got quite... Oh, that's, I can still keep going places. You know, that's a, that's thoughtful. Downtown. That's smart. Good choice. Um, now, if there was a zombie outbreak, what would you do to make sure you survived? You see, zombie outbreak things... In every single film I've seen, the only reason anyone's ever died is because they got lazy. And even on the good ones where people are like, you know, like on The Walking Dead, when people are completely, you know, it's, it's quite good. Like there are times when they're just sitting about and they just forget that there are zombies out there somewhere. Um, but maybe a lighthouse stocked up with things or an island would be pretty easy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, finally, I was just going to ask what uh, what we can expect next from you. More and more music. I, I guess now that I've had my first proper release, the floodgates are open. Uh, I've got like uh, tracks that people haven't even heard yet, like fully, like new ones. I've got about four that I'm sitting on, and I've got all my back catalogue, like Welcome Back, and all the ones that people know me for originally. Um, are going to get remastered and reproduced and made just cleaner and crisper like I've done with Give Them Hell and Let This Go as well. Um, maybe, you know, revisit them a little bit. Uh, Revocal them because I've got a proper mic now. And yeah, um, I'm working on getting to America this year, hopefully, but that's not that's not definite or anything. Um, there are just, there's, there's a. Yeah, I, can't, I don't know how much I can say. My main goal isn't necessarily to break into the EDM scene as much as it is just to break into music. Yeah, this, this, this year, just more and more, I'm going to keep releasing tracks. So I'm going to keep hitting people hard. I'm going to get through to DJs. I'm going to send off to radio, hopefully, and get just an attack on all fronts, really. Brilliant. Um, I might be tempted to set up a website just to blog and stuff. Um, Maybe start just lifting, to just to be sure. For when they come at you, just yeah, that's not a bad. Um, yeah, live shows are going to be um, hopefully coming in a big way today, uh, this week, this year. <laughs> it's going to be a busy week. <laughs> everywhere, every venue this week. <laughs> but now, um, yeah, the live show I'm going to try really get off the ground this year properly. Um, I think we're going to be ready for it. We do have our first confirmed show in April. Uh, um, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to actually announce that yet, so I'll err on the side of caution. Uh, um, yeah, 
I'm hopefully moving in with Faint next year as well, um, September time. So. Oh, that's going to be messy. Well, me and Faint uh, spend most nights um, playing stupid games, so I can, I can only see it getting better. I think I see <laughs> a video blog series right there. <laughs> Stan SP at home. Faint and Stan, how long before someone ends up in hospital? Well, we, me, me, and um, me and Andy think very similarly. I think so. Um, yeah, and we play quite a shows together, so it will work in that sense too. But yeah, watch out, Manchester. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Well, uh, thank you very much for joining me, man. It's been an absolute pleasure to get to talk to you and get to know more about the man behind the music. Not at all. Always, always happy to talk to anybody. All right, anyway, thank you very much for joining me, and uh, have a wonderful evening. You, sir. Have a good night. See you soon.